Hi, it's Nancy welcoming you to Garden Scroll. Today we are finishing up the post that I started on March the 23rd um, called Happy Day. It was our happy day when all of the debris was cleared out from the garden and I went around front and back and showed you the places I hadn't yet showed you and showed you some places I already had again and things were looking more like spring had came to the garden and also I showed you some of the uh, sedums and succulents that I put in the pots to try to save from having to have so much to water in the spring. You can see just right here with this one. This is one of them and it still looks great. The succulents look good and don't have a lot of watering and care to do through the hot summer months. So while we're looking at pots, we may as well look at this one. <laughs> I've told you before, but I got the tiniest little square, just a tiny little piece of this at Sunshine Nursery. And it has grown and grown into all this. I've also put it in other places and will put it in more places, maybe even this year to fill out some of the pots that I'm going to decide to put seed them in. I just tried some last year. I tried several because I thought I can't keep doing all this work and these may help me to not have to do so much work in the garden and they did and I do love it so it's it's just they just still look beautiful to me I love sedum and succulents and I noticed that my some of my hollyhocks I hope they're not going to still have that disease I'm sure I've shown you that some of them did get it a disease but this one had put down some little and actually this one right here needs to be moved too this this is a little um see if i'm getting it for you i think i think it, that's it right there that it um it's just a little seedling from this bigger one right back here and i had uh, some more that i dug up and put in different places yesterday this is another of the large sedums. It's probably Autumn Joy. That's the one I have the most of. And there should be a um, hosta in this little pot. And there is. Along with some weeds, of course. Let me get those weeds out of there. And this little hosta doesn't look like much, but as long as it's alive, it either will be this year, or if it continues to live, it will take a growth spurt. Actually, you can tell there's another little piece of it coming up right there. And uh, it will fill this pot out and be very pretty one day. And then this is another little pot that's filling out even more than it did last year. I had the option of planting something in that one side or just letting it continue to fill out with this beautiful sedum. And the last time I showed you this barberry, it was still in its dormant state, but you can tell it's still dark and it will lighten up some. But this is still, you can tell it's alive and looking good. And this is the little pot that has this like red sedum in it that has totally filled out. It was kind of scraggly last year, if I remember right. But there's nothing scraggly about it right now. It's looking great. This one, on the other hand, looks terrible. <laughs> but if you look close, you can see that there is some there. We'll do something with this pot. May try to get a different pot because I'm just tired of dealing with this coconut liner every year. And it is, it, it is expensive to do that. So I don't necessarily see the need to. I used to think there was a need to do that because uh, it does drain better than any of the other pots. 
and I was finding certain things that just seem to work only in them like that calabricoa but I have found it to work just as well in other pots too they just have to be drained well and they have to have consistent moisture and sometimes that's hard to do they also like cooler weather in Oklahoma um, it just doesn't have cool weather in the summertime hardly at all on a rare occasion we do get some cooler weather and it's always great when we do have the rain and some cooler weather we can get some of the things done that need to be done and that's a wonderful feeling and I moved this little peony because it was being hidden by this rose but I, I don't know if this is where I put it. I put it somewhere. Could be right here. But it still came back in this other area too. I mean, I'm not complaining. I love peonies. And this is what the weeds do. Look at this. He got right behind this iris blade. And you can't hardly see him from the front. And I think I just broke him off of there. I thought maybe because the, the ground was soft I could get him up. But he'll be back again. His little root is still right there. And I'm going to need to come out here and get something. That, so I just just my fingers to pull up some of this. Look at this. I have this uh, lamb's quarter coming up everywhere. That's not good. But, look at this. That doesn't look good either, but there's life. That looks good. Beautiful life. And this is my uh, nine bark. And this is that beautiful little purple woody salvia. I'm hoping it will just feel this whole area out. It's so pretty when it blooms. And it's a perennial, which means it comes back every year. And it's a perennial that blooms all summer long, which is rare too. They usually have just a few, like a week to maybe three weeks, maybe just there's very few that the tall flocks have a longer bloom time but most of the perennials even though they're beautiful and I want plenty of them so they'll keep coming back like this beautiful um, cat mint right here and it just comes back every year there's another one back here looks like a rose growing up in it that I'll need to get out of there actually but it's it's wonderful to have the perennials that come back. It's also and it's wonderful to have these like daylilies that are beautiful, many different colors and shades of the same color and just just beautiful. But they only bloom one day. But then they put on so many buds that there's a new bud blooming every day for many weeks through the summer. You know, like these pretty iris, when they bloom, they are so pretty. That's my husband's favorite flower. And they do have a totally unique bloom. But then they also, when they stop blooming, they have a ratty looking, where that, the stalk, where that bloom comes up on, it is just doesn't look good at all. But if you clip those off, which heaven only knows if I'll get all these clipped off. But if you can, and all you have left is this pretty little sword foliage, it still looks good and makes a wonderful backdrop for other plants. I noticed when I came out and was showing you this other side that this pen is full of buds also. But right now, as I came up from this side of it, I'm noticing I do have a tulip here. I do love the tulips and someday I've got to find a way to get, get them where they will be free from molds, gophers, voles, 
I found I didn't even know there was such thing as a vole. I thought they were all moles, but I read that moles hibernate all winter and they do they do not eat in the winter time. But voles, I promise you that they can and will take out an area as long as this fence all the way back behind that little well house the whole fence line one time I had it just full of tulips planted one fall and the next spring I got one little scraggly tulip that had been eaten on and it didn't make it but that's the only one I even got to see so I'm reluctant and I have tried many things I've tried putting them in um, those little plastic baskets with the little plastic baskets do like everything else in the garden you know they just disintegrate and then there they are uh, open to the voles and moles even if you get the small and you definitely have to get the small they'll just go right through them anyway <laughs> so and uh, then also the same with the chicken wire and different things that I've tried I've tried many things and really can't seem to get uh, anything that's really working for me like I put some of that sedum in this little pot it's so small it doesn't have what maybe two inches of um, soil in the bottom that it came back from last year that's so wonderful and this little plant I love it too my niece uh, Lacey gave this to me and it stays green even in the winter it, it's not quite as green and pretty but it stays green and I love it but it will keep going and going and going and then it will get down on the ground and become a ground cover and then you know it gets invasive so I'm going to try to I'll probably spray this here and try to get this up and out of here I've also got these um, wild onions growing up in areas and I hate those things I, I've got to get rid of those too I may try to spray some of them but I'll probably try to dig those out around this little area simply because I, I would not want to lose my um, hercula or coral bells And I have not had an opportunity to go uh, to go shopping, so I still haven't got a window box for this little pot. But that's in the plans. This little pot here is full of sweet William, which is beautiful, and I love it. And it lasts quite a while too but it will go ahead and die back and even the foliage will die back so I'll have to plant something else in this little pot for when the, the sweet William is gone and you can see that I've got this pot in front of it here full of, of a sedum too and the one over here of course that's a big pretty sedum and this that's in here is um, Oh my, give me a minute. <laughs> it's obedient plant, that's what this is. And it grows, it, it will be invasive if you do not put it in a pot. And then this one here behind it too, that is Artesmia. If I, and that's probably not the way to pronounce it, but it, it is a beautiful little plant. I love this color of a plant, like a Dusty Miller but it also can get invasive that's why I put it in a pot and then sometimes it will get out of the pot and ta try to take over the air any area where it can it will and then this little pot is got has got um, yarrow in it also I'm contemplating on putting more of this exact same little plant in here I thought this would fill it out a lot quicker than it did but it did come back and it does look good and I think when I get enough of it in the front to uh, divide again I will just go ahead and put this all the way around this pot and I think that will look great 
and be a little bit easier to take care of. Look, after our rain, this sedum just picked right up and went, even though it's in that little broken pot. So I'm going to probably either take this and put it in the new window box that I get for that uh, gate planter, or else I will put this in a different place and put something else in the gate planter. These little pods are under the eave of the hat, or the, the shed, actually. But, um... They do not get water much through the winter, so they're not coming back well at all. But I will put some other um, Xerox plant or, or plant that doesn't need a lot of water in these pots. And I think they'll look pretty again, at least for another season. I may have to change them out each season, but... I still think that's the best way to go is just to put something in that doesn't take a lot of water and just enjoy the sedums in them. And I forgot to tell you to show you how this, uh, when I unwrapped this thornless cactus, it's still alive. I did have two big old panicles on this side that that didn't make it. I should have taken the wrapper off sooner because it was just limp and it had needed more air than it was getting. But it saved it and this side looks great and this is I actually trimmed off the bad part of this and I think it will grow from this another one on this side for me. So we're kind of back where we started in the backyard. But I'm going to take you back over in this area one more time because I saw something yesterday that I wanted to show you and I was so surprised to find it there. Oh my, wait a minute. Before I go back there, I've got to go get my little garden knife and lift this out of here. So I'm over in this area now, and again, before I show you what I was going to, look at this. I have some lilacs blooming, just a few. I hope we have lots. I hope they don't get taken out and nipped in the bed. <laughs> and that we get to see this full of beautiful bloom. But what I wanted to show you is this little plant right here. I got this little plant last year at our local Garden Express. I'm not sure what it's called. I don't see its little tag. I try to keep those on there till I learn their names, but I don't always manage to do that. But look at this. It's actually blooming. I didn't know it bloomed. So isn't that sweet? More buds there where there's going to have some more. So that's great. And I do believe that this little wren birdhouse is being occupied by that little wren I tried to get a picture of for you. So I'm going to sit here for a little while and see if she'll show up. But while I do, I wanted to tell you that yesterday I was sitting in the garden. Actually, I came out here to try to get something done. And I, I just don't bounce back when I get that fatigue. And I got finished with it with the garden Wednesday. And then Thursday, I thought, you know... Maybe I'll rest a little bit. I did do, actually I ended up doing several things in here as far as fixing up things that were broken and needed to be taken care of. And then yesterday I tried to do something and I basically got practically nothing done. I did plant a few, uh, a few uh, lily bulbs, one pink iris and and transplanted three hollyhocks. 
that's not much for a day's work. Sometimes do you ever feel like you cannot believe how little you can get done in a day's time? It just doesn't make sense, but there you have it. That's the way it goes. <laughs> But I was thinking about, you know, even though I wasn't able to bounce back and not feeling, I don't know how to put it. I know God is with me, but sometimes, you know, you just feel him so strong and he's just right there helping you and like, like magic. <laughs> so, so wonderful. But uh, then other times you're just so tired that he's all around you still and you just don't see it. You don't feel it. Um, you live by faith, of course you live by faith, but at the same time, um, sometimes you want to live by sight, <laughs> but, um, anyway, I was, re I, as I sit here, I talked with my, my lifelong friend, we just talked and talked, a lot about nothing, and a lot about health, <laughs> and a lot about struggles, but, there was something so good about having a friend that knows you that well and still loves you and has been a part of your life to the point that she's become a part of you. And it's just, it was a wonderful thing. But I remembered a time in our lives when we kind of went other directions and her life was full with her family and my life was full with my new family and I didn't get to see them and I missed I missed them so much they were such a part of my life that I I couldn't quite get a hold of going on without them and I I finally I, I just went out to an area not too far from our home and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed until I gave it to the Lord and I, I did ask that it could come back around someday, but, you know, his will be done. And then years, years went by. I, I was, at that time, I had a new husband. I had uh, two bonus children that came with me, and they were treating me somewhat like um, the Goldie Hawn's character got treated in Overboard. <laughs> And I just didn't, just didn't fit in with my own life anymore. And I was empty and, and hurt inside a lot. But I, I knew that, you know, this is the beginning of something. We'll see what God's going to do with this. And we'll see if these children grow to love me. And I do believe they have. I do. But, you know, they still love their mother. Their biological mother and therefore they don't have the time and energies for me nor do they want to hurt her by giving me that and I get that so I'm okay with it to a great deal but you know I'm so grateful that I have my own little daughter who loves me and, and doesn't have I don't have to share with another mother even though I wouldn't mind you know sharing her with it with a mother-in-law someday, but all of that aside, <laughs> I love you, sweetheart. Don't get mad at me <laughs> telling any of your personal stuff. But what I was really going to tell you is just how wonderful, how wonderful God did bring that back around. I never thought we would do that, and as I was sitting there talking to her, I felt that. I felt like God saying, "Here you go. It's been a while." But here it is. And we felt it, both of us have felt it before when we first started getting back together and realizing that all those years, years and years, like they just faded away. Like there was no space of time since we were just, just a little older than teenagers. And then we got back when we were getting old. <laughs> And it was like there was no time between us at all that had passed in the way we felt for one another, the way it felt to be with each other. And it was just wonderful. And just to think that we get to do things together. We're planning on going to um, 
going shopping for plants together and taking my one of my sisters with me that also worked with her uh, during part of that time that we were not that close together and I did get to see her a few times but I never thought it would be like it was before but God brought it back around and you know that you feel like giving up on things but oh father please don't let us do that help us to go somewhere and pray and pray and pray and then if we have to be apart for a time to grow separately in our own lives and then come back together just help us to come back together the way you did for me that was wonderful that was marvelous that was absolutely something I know you did I felt you did I felt you you tell me here's the answer to your prayer right here right now and you know with God the time is it's not like it is with us I'm sure it felt it didn't feel like it was all them years for him but God is good. I love him so much. I wouldn't want to be without him. That's for sure. I wouldn't want to depend to not depend on him. I want to depend on him. I want to look up to him. I want to love him. I want to honor him. I want to serve him. I want to do what he wants me to do. And to find the happiness and joy in serving the Lord. To have abundant life. And then to have eternal life with Christ in heaven and you know what I think Susie and I'll have that time together too and a lot of it is because of her and her family because they showed me what a Christian life could be and they made me want it and they made me seek for it they, they didn't actually make me, but you know what I mean. They inspired me. They showed me something that I wanted, and they showed me that it could happen. So our little wren did not show up. She's hearing me talking. She's somewhere listening. I'm pretty sure of it. But I don't know if I showed you this little pot of Chinese dunce cap. Isn't that great how much of it came back? enough that I can get some of this to put in other places too I believe and I need to take you around to the front because I also got this far side over here cleaned out maybe I go a little bit slow here too so you can see some of the things like this pretty hosta this pretty hosta I think this is the one I was telling you I would like to get some more starts up but I'd also like to have it here so I'm not sure if I'll do that this year or not but I'm not sure I won't but all this area is now cleaned out I did go ahead and clean out these these little pots and all all the surrounding area this whole little area here this is another little pot of that pretty sedum I might could get me a start out of this one we'll see about that actually I think this is that some of that too so maybe a little here a little there and maybe we'll have enough to fill out that one little pot which probably won't do a lot this year but it may get it a good start for next year some of this when I took it off I just couldn't believe how big and pretty it was especially that goes for this one. Oh my I had left this one on because this is glass and I wanted to protect it but when I took it off this little hosta was so tall it was all wrinkled up together because of the plastic bag but it only took a day for it to just come right out of it and Fill them open and just look gorgeous. And you know what? This may be another, and I'm not sure. I have a, a big one of these and a small one that's this pretty color, but this looks like that same plant. So 
I can, there's another one where I can get, I think I can get enough to get that one little pot in the back at least cleaned up. I did take this off of my, the plastic off of my hens and chicks. And some of them look okay. Not good, but okay. And some of them are totally gone. I just do not, do not do well with hens and chicks. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. But I'm going to keep after it until I figure it out, Lord willing. And I'm thinking that this little plant right here is the one that's the bigger plant. It gr just grows taller and wider than th the other little plant that I've been showing you. But they're both very pretty. Just depends on where you want them and how big of one you want. I like a little one to go in a small pot, but I do love these that get bigger and just make such a pretty showing in the bigger pots. And in this little pot, I used perennials. There's several different perennials in here. The light green is Creeping Jenny. There's a see them in here there's also right behind it there a peony behind it there is a day lily and that may be it for that little pot but that was certainly enough and if they will make it and look good and keep going i think that's going to be beautiful and you know what it just makes me even more want to fill out the rest of these pots I also am noticing that I need to spray, which I already knew that even before I saw these. They're, they're just taking over. I hate that. And I'm so glad that my some of my Bells of Ireland are coming up volunteer in this little pot too. Because they just add, when you, I'm, this is one area I will fill up with, um, Probably impatience and coleus. They're, they're my favorite shade plants and they just look good and do good if the snails will leave them alone. But if you fill this in with that and then have those pretty bells of Ireland coming up fairly tall, they look so great. And of course, the bells of Ireland do go away sooner. They will even turn brown and you can save your seed or let it drop and come up for next year. That's even better for me. But, um, of course, you don't want so many. You don't want to deal with them. But other than that, that's the best idea, in my opinion, to do with them. But this, they just add so much to the beauty of the, uh, where you make just like an arrangement in a container of beautiful plants. Make a container garden. Look at my seed boxes. Keep looking. Look, there's little seeds coming up everywhere. That's so wonderful. So these are hopefully poppies and uh, coneflowers. Although I can see there's a few here too, but as I go on up farther, I don't see any yet. They could just come up later. I hope that's the case. And these may not even be that. They may be from the petunias that dropped and went to sea. But either way, we have some flowers coming up. I don't see hardly any in this one either, though. Except, of course, for my, for my uh, Bells of Ireland. They're still coming up. We got some rain last night, which is great. I'm seeing a weed right in here. Get that out of there for you, or for me. I don't want that thing in there. <laughs> but I need to go ahead it while it's damp and cool, and get some of these and put them in other places so they'll have a chance to to go ahead and transplant. Well, I hope you had fun. I certainly did. That's the most relaxing thing I've done since cleaning out the garden. And I don't mean that the cleaning out of the garden was relaxing. It was not. But getting it done was.
one more thing let me tell you because this is a snowball bush when our other little spring bushes go away this one will bloom in the later spring please be sure to like and to subscribe to the channel